Hey spooky people, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a while, but I'm happy to be back. I've been posting some shorts, but I've just been so busy lately with gardening and trying to get my new house together for the spring and summer that I haven't really been able to post any videos. So I'm happy to be back today and officially be showing you guys my 1940s makeup look. I know I've been talking about filming this 1940s makeup tutorial for months now and I haven't done it yet. So I'm excited today to finally do that for you guys. Also, I've had some people over on Instagram and in my real day-to-day -day life ask me how I've been doing my hair like this lately. So if you guys are interested in a tutorial, I'd love to do that for you. Comment down below and let me know if you'd like to see that. And let's get into the 1940s makeup tutorial. Now, these tutorials are excerpts that I found on Pinterest from real 1940s makeup and beauty books. There was three different options I could choose from and I will show them right up here. There was the blonde makeup routine for if you have blonde hair, blue eyes, and fair skin. There was a brunette tutorial for if you have brown hair, fair skin, and brown or green eyes. And lastly, there was a dark tutorial for if you have dark hair and not fair skin. So personally, I decided to go with the dark makeup routine just because I have more of an olive complexion to my skin tone and I'm not really fair. When I do buy foundation, I usually get like a beige toned shade. So my skin tone is kind of more like medium, I would say. And also, I'm dyeing my hair red right now. They didn't have any options for red hair, so I went with the dark also because my natural hair color is very dark brown. And my eyes are also dark brown, so I thought I would kind of go with my natural features a bit. So that's the one I will be showing you guys today, and you can see it right here. And by the way, on the tutorial, as you will see, this is called the Spanish brunette look. So it says on there that we're going to use powder for foundation because I'm not sure when liquid foundation was invented, but I'm pretty sure they just used powders back then. I think I have a powder compact in the other room. I'm, I'm going to go look for it, but if I don't have it, we're just going to use liquid foundation. It says to use a raspberry colored blush. So I do have this one. I tried to follow this very closely. So... I went to the drugstore and I was able to find this color. I think that's pretty like raspberry in my opinion. Um, this is a Revlon Insta Blush. It's like a cream blush. It's called Berry Kiss. So it's berry colored. So <laughs> we're going to go with it. I'm going to use that for blush today. It also said for lipstick that the lipstick should be a little bit darker than your blush. For lipstick, I also have this Revlon that I purchased at the drugstore. It's called Spicy Cinnamon, and this is the color of it. I think it's very pretty. It's like a brown red almost. And if we, if we compare these two, I would say that they are similar, and this is a little bit darker, a little bit more brown. So I think that it'll complement well for the tutorial. It's also assuming we have black hair, and you guys know I used to have black hair, but lately I've been dyeing it red. So it said to use a black eyebrow pencil to shape and fill in your brows. I don't have black today, but I have a very dark brown that I'm going to use. This is also Revlon. So I think that'll be fine. I think we can tweak things a little bit. Next, it also says if you have dark brown eyes or very dark eyes that you should use purple eyeshadow to accentuate that and bring out kind of like a pop of color, I guess. So I have this. Maybelline palette. Yeah, I know the white shade is broken. I accidentally broke it. But as you can see, there's like browns and purples in there and also some whites. So I think I'm going to use like this lavender purple and also this darker purple. I think I'm going to do like dark purple on the outside, this color on the inside, and then above my, like not above, but like above my eye, under my eyebrow, I'm going to do like the white, I think. And today I also have purple mascara. It says to use black mascara. I'm thinking because they didn't have colored mascaras back then. <laughs> um, 
I do have a black mascara, but I kind of want to use the purple because it said purple eyeshadow makes your eyes pop. So I think purple mascara would do the same thing. I think we're going to go in with purple. Let me go see if I can find that makeup compact. Okay, guys, I am back with my compact. <laughs> this is very, very old. I bought it at Kmart, so now you know how old it is. I don't really use powders anymore, but for the sake of this video, I want it to be authentic. So I think we're going to go in with it today. This is a L'Oreal True Match Compact. It's made for warm skin tones. I'm not even sure if they still make this anymore. I haven't looked. Um, <clears throat> this is how much I have left. As you can see, it was used and well loved. <laughs> um, I believe there's a sponge underneath of this that we can apply with. So <laughs> that's what we're going to do. I'm actually really excited about the purple shades. So when I do my own makeup... I typically tend to do um, like browns or golds for like eyeshadows and stuff like that, but I'm very excited about the purple. I think it'll look really nice. I wanted to say one thing I really appreciate about vintage makeup is that I feel like back in the day, um, the goal of makeup was to like really kind of accentuate your own unique features and kind of make you look like the best version of yourself. Whereas I feel like now with a lot of makeup, um, the goal is to look very similar to other people. I feel like there's some sort of like ideal like face shape or whatever that nobody really talks about, but everybody's trying to achieve through like contouring and that kind of stuff. So with this, I really like that you can enhance your natural features and make yourself look like the best version of yourself that you can. So today I think we're going to start out with powder and then we'll move on to eyebrows then eyes and I think we'll do lips last okay so going in with my <laughs> antique face powder <laughs> yep, here is my sponge as you can see that is also used and abused I'm gonna use the <laughs> clean side today and this also has a little mirror in it so that's cute I'll need that to apply this so I'm just going to do a few swipes in here. There's like cat hair on here. Um, so I'm going to do a few swipes and then I'm going to try to apply it. Hopefully it doesn't look streaky. I think I stopped using powder because like this type of motion can make it look streaky, but we'll see. So as I kind of mentioned earlier, powder was like my go-to makeup in like middle school and even high school. I think I stopped using powder like late high school, but like 100% my early teen years, all I used was powder. I think because at the time that's what my mom was using as well. So that's why I started using it. And I did like powder. The only thing with it is it can get cakey, especially if it's like hot out and you're sweating like the powder is like pretty noticeable that you're wearing it as opposed to a lot of foundations that kind of blend into your skin. I feel like powder kind of just sits there. I think that's why I stopped using it. And I'm pretty sure I bought this powder. When I was still in school, if not when I was in school, then very soon after I graduated so um this powder very well could be like 10 years old and I know makeup expires but I feel like powder would be safer to use than you know think other things that like go in your eyes and all that kind of stuff so hopefully i don't have any reactions to this i'll let you know if i end up in the hospital later um but seriously i think i'll be all right okay so this is my powder it's on i think it did a pretty good job i don't feel cakey or anything like that so it's good And next we're going to move on to our eyebrows. As I mentioned, I have a Revlon Colorstay Micro Brow Pencil. One side of it is a spoolie brush and the other side is like a, uh, it's, it looks like an eyeliner. Um, 
not sure what the color of this is. Like I said, it is dark brown. Oh, okay. So the color is 456 dark brown. I didn't know if it had a name or something, but no, just dark brown. So that's what we're going to go into with today. Let's consult the tutorial and see exactly what it says about doing your eyebrows because there was like a little paragraph about how to shape them or something. So let's see what it says. Okay, so what it says is that if your eyebrows need widening or lengthening to use a black pencil, it said do not go in too heavy because you want it to look natural. And it also said if your eyes are small and you want them to appear bigger, you can draw a little line at the corner and bring it up towards your eyebrow. I'm thinking it's talking about a cat eye. I didn't know they had that back then. Um, I know cat eyes became like a trend in the 60s. Um, so that's different. See, we learn something new every day here. Um, I love to do cat eyes, but I don't know if I want to do it with my eyebrow pencil. It kind of sounds weird to me. Um, we could try it and see how it looks. I do have an eyeliner here. If we want to try that, we can. Um, but I'm going to go in and fill in my eyebrows. As you can see, they're very sparse. I recently shaved them, so I got rid of all the little hairs down here. But I'm going to, of course, fill in this part. Bring the tail out more because my eyebrow tail, like, is non-existent from years of plucking. So I'm um, going to fill it in and lengthen them. As the tutorial said, we are going to make sure we don't use too much of a heavy hand so that it still looks natural. Let's do it. Okay, so I'm going to go in with this little um, eyeliner looking tip and I'm just going to draw some lines in my eyebrows where they're looking exceptionally sparse. And I'm gonna fill in the tail too. Now, I don't know if I do this right. <laughs> Cause I don't know if there was like, I don't know if there was like an actual technique for this, but what I do is I just kind of scribble in where I need to fill in my eyebrows. Then I take the blood, the, then I take the brush, like the spoolie brush on the other end. And I kind of just um, blend it out with that, if that makes sense. So the lines aren't as harsh. I'm thinking that's how you're supposed to do it because I don't know how else you would do it. Because that makes sense to me. Um, but then again, this doesn't really have directions and I like never looked up how to use this properly. So I think that's how you do it. That's how I always do it. And I think my eyebrows look all right. Okay, here is one of my eyebrows. As you can see, it's looking a lot better than the other one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the other one now to make them look even. Everybody says your eyebrows are supposed to be like sisters and not twins or something. I'm like, I don't even know if mine are related. But hopefully, hopefully they don't look too bad. I think they look all right. I'm thinking they look pretty good. So next, I think we're going to move on to blush. So once again, we're going to use this Revlon Photo Ready Insta Blush, which is a cream, as I already mentioned. It's in a tube like this, and you kind of just apply it. Um, it says it's a new formula. I don't know what they changed about it, but I think it works pretty well. I actually really like it, as opposed to a powder blush. Because when I use powder blush, I go in like heavy and I look like a clown. But <laughs> this um, makes it a lot easier for me to apply. Now it says for blush to shade it carefully and lightly into the skin. As if you were applying paint to a canvas or something like that. I'm like, okay, sure. Um, so we're going to delicately apply our blush now. Um... And I think I'm just going to use the sponge from our foundation. One, because there's foundation on it, so if I put on too much, I can kind of blend it out. And two, to be historically accurate here, I don't know if women back then had like a huge like makeup brush collection. They might have. Some women probably did. But I'm thinking most women probably used the sponge from their foundation. I know my mom used to do that, so that's what I'm going to do. And I'm going to apply this. Now in the photo, she had her blush like right under her eye, which I'm like, that's a choice. Um, probably not going to do that. I watched a, another video actually on YouTube that was vintage. I think it was from like the 50s. And they were saying if you have a round face, this makeup look 
that I watched the video of was specifically for round faces, which I do have. Um, it was saying if you apply your blush like in a circle, that'll just make your face look rounder. But if you apply it down your face in like a triangle shape almost like this, um, it'll make your face look longer and kind of more narrow. So it'll give you like more of an oval shape, which is cool. I think I'm going to do that today because I want more of a shape. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it on this side too. And then I'm going to take my sponge here and try to blend that out. If it doesn't work, I may go get a brush because I have tried this already and I like the results of it. But I used a, a brush every time I've done it. I haven't used a sponge. So we'll see how this looks. Like I said, if we're looking crazy, we will go get a brush. I think that looks pretty good. I think our grandparents here were definitely onto something. I think this might be my new look. <laughs> I actually really like it. I'm like, oh, okay. Didn't think this was going to look good, but it does. It really does. Um, so now that the blush is on, I think we're going to do eyes. So it did say, if you guys remember, to use the purple eyeshadow. And I'm going to be using these two purple shades. Oops, these two purple shades here. And then I might go in with either this beige or the white, like, under my eyebrow. For this, I think I'm just going to use my fingers, guys. Because this tutorial does not say anything about what brushes to use, what products to apply this with. And if you guys remember, this drugstore makeup used to come with a little brush. I don't know why, but they don't anymore. I guess they figure nobody uses them or something. But this didn't come with anything. <laughs> the tutorial does not tell me what to use, so I'm going to use my finger. I'm going to go in with this light purple right here. So you can see that it's on my finger, and I'm just going to put it all over my lid. That is on. You can see it's like a little wash of color. I'm going to do it on this side, too. Cute. Okay, so now I'm going to take the dark purple and kind of just put it on the outside. Should we try the little cat eye wing that it mentioned with the eyebrows to make her eyes look bigger? I think that might be cute. I don't, again, I don't know if I want to do it with the eyebrow pencil, but that's what it says to do. So I think we should try it just for the sake of the tutorial. It didn't say to do this, but I'm going to take this gold and I'm just gonna put it under my eyebrow up here the purple eye makeup it's definitely subtle it's definitely not a smoky eye or anything like that do you guys think it looks nice with my brown eyes let me know because <laughs> that's what it said to use in the tutorial I definitely don't think it looks bad it's definitely like more natural looking which is cool I know back then natural makeup was what was popular for like day-to-day -day wear and you know, they used to think a little makeup definitely went a long way. So let me know what you think. So far, so good in my opinion. It's definitely good for like a day-to-day, -day, like get up and go. I'm just running errands type of look. It's cute. I think I am going to go in with my eyebrow pencil and just try to do a little cat eye and see how it looks. So I have my little pencil here and I'm just going to... draw a little line as it said to do and I'm gonna put one over here pretty sure it said to go up towards your eyebrow it didn't say to connect it to anything so and it didn't say to draw it out like a wing it just said do a line so we're doing the line following the directions and that's how it looks not my favorite thing does it make my eyes look bigger mm. yeah I could see that I think it does yeah I'm used to doing like a big wing when I do it so for me just seeing this little line I'm kind of like mm. but <laughs> I think it does look cute okay so now we're gonna do mascara let's see what it says about the mascara Okay, so for mascara, it's specifically saying to use black mascara. As I mentioned, I have purple here right now, so I'm going to go in my bedroom and see if I can find black. 
pretty sure I have one. Hopefully it's not dry. It says make sure you apply the mascara to both your upper and lower lashes. So I'm going to go find black and I will meet you guys back right here. Right, so I am back with my black mascara. We're going to use CoverGirl Lash Blast Volume, which is waterproof. I know back in the day they used cake mascaras. I unfortunately do not have one, although I would like to buy some Besame products. If you guys don't know what Besame is, it's a website that sells reproduction vintage makeup. So they sell like cake mascaras. They sell like those big powder poofs for like deodorant to like freshen up and stuff like that. They sell um, the big like powder compacts. Um, they have authentic lipsticks that were like colors that they sold back in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s which I think is really cool. Um, and makeup is a little bit pricey, but I'm dying to try it. So I might buy some and make a video on that as well. I know it's been out for a long time, but I feel like a lot of people don't know about it. So that might be a fun video as well. So as I mentioned, no cake mascara for me. That's what it shows in the tutorial. So I'm just gonna use my regular here. Big old wand, so. Let's go in and put it on and we'll make sure we put it on the top and bottom as the tutorial says. Okay guys, so here is my mascara applied. I did have to fix my eyeshadow a little bit because this wand is so big. I got some mascara on the top of my eyelid, but I fixed it to the best of my ability and here is how it is looking. I appreciate that this look is very natural actually. I think it's cute. Hey guys, editing Caitlin here. It is now much later in the day and I just wanted to hop on here and say I don't know what happened but I filmed the whole outro and the whole part of me putting on the lipstick which was the ending of the video and now it is gone. I guess I didn't press record and I thought I did so I don't have any of that footage but just so you guys know I did use the spicy cinnamon Revlon. This is my finished look. It's now nighttime, so I've had this look on all day. I went out to the store and I actually got some compliments, so that's awesome. Overall, I do really like how this look turned out, and I think I'm definitely gonna incorporate some of these techniques into my everyday makeup look. If you hear something weird in the background, my dog and cat are wrestling, so I apologize. Um, but I just wanted to hop on real quick and film a very impromptu outro. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will be back very soon with a new video. And also, now that it's June, we're going to start Halloween decor hunting soon, so I cannot wait for that. You guys definitely don't want to miss that. It's going to be a lot of fun this year, and since I moved, I'm going to be going to different stores. So if you want to stick around for that, then please subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. If you're already subscribed, thank you. And again, thank you for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.